57talk.com, Scottsdale, Arizona. Gary Cubetta back again, and it's my pleasure to introduce one of my all-time favorites. I think one of your all-time favorites as well, Jimmy, the boogie-woogie man, Valiant. Jimmy, pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Gary. God bless you, man. Thanks for uh, letting me on your show, man. Hey, it's a hot deal, man, at 57talk.com, man. Every chance I get, man, I tune it in, man. Thank you. Jimmy, I remember you as part of the Valiant Brothers in the 1970s. And I remember when you first came into the, at the time, World Wide Wrestling Federation, you were the most colorful team that had ever come into the territory. And I, I was researching you last night, and I found out that you and John had started that tag team just before that run, around 73, 74? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we did. Uh, how that all came about, uh, Gary, was uh, I was in Indianapolis uh, for Dick the Bruiser, Wilbur Snyder, uh, uh, territory was a WWE. WA and uh, my uh, manager was Pretty Boy Bobby Heenan and uh, Baron Von Roski was there and uh, uh, Ernie Ladman and uh, Pepper Gomez, Moose Cholak. I mean, we, we uh, uh, Bob Ellis, Cowboy Bob. We had a great, great uh, run there uh, in '73. And uh, what happened was Gary that uh, uh, Bobby, uh, uh, Pretty Boy Bobby, wanted to go to uh, AWA Vern Gagne, Minneapolis territory, and uh, so Bruiser uh, he says, "Look, uh, Heenan, you." you have to replace yourself with another top peel, you know, and uh, and then you know you can we'll we'll, we'll give you uh, uh, the okay, the green light to go, you know. So uh, me and Bobby and and Roska, uh, the Baron, we went up to uh, uh, Detroit work on Saturday night and once a month, and on Sundays we would go across the uh, um, uh, across into uh, Canada, Ontario to London, uh, uh, Ontario, and we'd wrestle for the Bear Man and. Uh, 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 during the summers, and and the bear man had the, this young, big, uh, good-looking blonde kid there, and he was wrestling John L. Sullivan, and and uh, so so Bobby, it was all his idea. Bobby remembered that, said, "Hey, Jimmy, remember that real good-looking, big uh, muscle kid up there, man, and uh, with the bear man?" And I said, "Yeah, brother." So he says, "Wonder if we could bring him in as your uh, valiant brother, you know?" So that's how that started right there. Uh, that we, they they brought him in, and and, and uh, we named him Luscious Johnny and Handsome Jimmy, and uh, we'd get on interviews, Gary, and I'd say, hey, there's no difference between Luscious Johnny and Handsome Jimmy. The only difference is that uh, I'm not uh, Luscious. I'm just handsome, and uh, he's not handsome. He's just Luscious, man. And when you started the tag team, did you did you know it was going to be magic? Because I remember even back then, the the uh, after wrestling magazines in New York, the Valiant Brothers were all over them. Yeah, it was. It was uh, something that uh, uh, Bobby and myself, uh, uh, we'd talk about uh, for uh, maybe six weeks once the deal was said, uh, done, and, and uh, you wait till you see the Valiant Brother, you know, wait till you see Luscious Johnny, man, and, you know, wait, wait till you see this lean, mean wrestling machine, and so for six weeks, we build this guy up, man, you know, uh, my brother coming in, and uh, so when we hit the aisle the first time at the Expo in Indianapolis, and uh, with uh, Bobby managing us, uh, we, we went against uh, Pepper Gomez and Wilbur Snyder, they were the WWA World Tag Team Champions, we beat them right there on TV, and uh, yeah, it took off there, man. It took off, and we had a good nine-month run there, and then, of course, uh, the, uh, the, we came in in 74 to uh, WWF, man, and uh, beat Tony Gurria and Dean Ho uh, the first uh, time in on TV, and uh, we stayed uh, over 15 months, had held the belts the longest at that time in the Federation uh, history, and uh, yeah, they were chasing us, man, and it was a great run, great run, brother. A lot of people think that the Worldwide Wrestling Federation moved into the modern era when superstar Billy Graham became champion in 77, but I remember very clearly that the beginning was the Valiant Brothers. Captain Lou Albano, yourself, uh, John Valiant, when you guys came in, it had it was something that the East Coast had never seen before, and like you said, you main evented throughout your entire run. It, it, it never really slowed down. No, it didn't, and, and in fact, Gary, the, the world champion was uh, Bruno San Martino, and uh, he would, uh, of course, he had the WWWF uh, World t- uh, Title, and and uh, uh, we we went through uh, not only Tony Gurria and and Dean Ho, but they put all types of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, combinations against us, you know, uh, uh, like Santana and and Putski and uh, Monsoon and and uh, uh, Brito, uh, 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 you, you know, just uh, uh, Victor Rivera and and, and uh, uh, you know uh, Pedro. Morales and uh, 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 
and and all these all these uh, uh, you know good good teams, man. And and uh, finally, uh, nobody could stop and, and defeat the uh, Valiant Brothers, man. You know the flamboyant Valiant Brothers. So 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 what they did, they put the dream team together, and they said, well, this is it, you know. And and so they uh, Bruno, uh, uh, we had two shots in Madison Square Gardens against uh, Bruno San Martino tag teamed up with uh, 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 Chief J, uh, J Strongbow, and that was and Chief was the number two uh, baby face man in that country in the territory then and they says well this is it well the first um, uh, time shot in the garden we went to Broadway went to, through the time limit and there was a curfew there then and at ten at eleven o'clock uh, no matter what uh, that was it it was yeah, a yeah. New York yes Jimmy and, let me stop August 26 nineteen seventy four twenty two thousand in the garden you're in the main event now usually back then tag teams they weren't in the main event they were somewhere down in the middle of the card and Bruno would be facing a an opponent on his own but Bruno and Chief J Strombo versus Jimmy and John Valiant split decision that's what you're talking about right exactly exactly uh what that was that, that you might have had the second shot the first shot went to the curfew and then Vince McMahon senior uh the uh, you know uh which which it was is Vince's father that's who I work for and then he um came back and said okay we're going to return this match and uh Strongbow and 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 uh, 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 Bruno against the, the Valiant Brothers, but we're going to put them on in the middle of the card so there is no curfew, so there has to be a winner. That's when uh, it, it, it was probably the... Uh, right, no, uh, no, that second match, that's October 7th, 74. There again, you go. Again in the main event, and tag teams were never in the main event in the Garden. There you go, there Bruno, you go, Gary. Bruno and Strombo, this time they beat the Valiant Brothers, but the second fall was by DQ. You guys were champions at the time. And held the belt. And you got to keep the title belt. And, and how that happened was that Captain Lou, uh, he knew, man, they, they had us rocking and rolling. They were, man, we were, we were ready to de- get defeated. And Captain Lou, you know, instead of throwing the towel in, he came running in, man. And, of course, that's the automatic DQ. And, and uh, uh, Strongbow and, and, and uh, Bruno, they left uh, not only me and uh, uh, Johnny, but Captain Lou all in a big puddle of blood in the middle of Madison Square Garden ring. And, uh, but, exactly, we went out and uh, Lou knew what he what he's doing we went out we were still the uh, world tag team champions J- jimmy what was it with you guys in the blood i i remember in the magazines always front cover you guys were just covered in blood was it was it something that was just just worked with the gimmick what or, or do you guys like it or did it at what was it about that well you know uh at different times you know hey man like for 20 years I, I bled every night man you know and so did bobby heenan and 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 uh, cowboy bob ellis and the butcher uh you know uh and, and uh, the, the original Sheik and uh, and uh, Wahoo McDaniel, man, there's a lot of bleeders, you know. And, and uh, yeah, once you get, uh, you know, uh, something started up there and, man, you getting poked and punched and, and uh, you know, uh, headbutt with the ring post and that, and uh, you just bleed every night. And, and it's so funny, Gary, because, uh, you know, uh, different times these uh, blood drives would come around and, uh, you know, ask if you would like to uh, donate your blood and this and that. And I sort of... You you know, uh, not uh, being disrespectful, but I chuckle to myself and I tell him, no, I already gave it the office. <laughs> oh, that's, funny. Yeah. that's funny, Jimmy. Okay, now, you're in the garden. You've got two main events. Now, tag teams, again, in the WWWF and even the WWF have always played second fiddle. So I want the, the listeners to understand how important the Valiants were. Two main events, San Martino against Duncan, November 1874, uh, and then Bruno came back against Duncan, uh, December 1674. Guess what they do? Jimmy, they put you guys back in the main event, January 20th, 1975, Bruno San Martino and Jay Strombo. This time they beat the Valley, well, they beat you again, but this time by disqualification. You guys were so strong as a tag team that they keep forcing you to the top. Did you, were, was Vince Sr. telling you guys that you were red hot for a tag team? Well, they knew because uh, everywhere we went, you know, it, it was uh, the box office uh, showed it, you know, uh, man, it jammed the, jammed the, the, the uh, box office, which is the ticket of uh, uh, you know, uh, payers and, and uh, the, the good wrestling fans and men would sell out. And uh, so, yeah, no one had to tell no one nothing, man. You know, so, hey, it, it makes sense, you know, put this uh, up on top and, and uh, you know, keep it running as long as you can, man. You know, whip that dog, brother. You held and defended the titles for over a 
year. Finally, you lost them to Dominic DiNucci and Victor Rivera. Was why did they take the straps off you? Was it was getting a little was it slowing down a bit or or what what was the story behind that? No, you know the, the thing is uh, years ago, especially you know uh, they, they didn't want they had a, a handful of guys in each territory that would homestead and and continue staying and uh, no no they, they they I was there uh, four years ago as a single handsome Jimmy you know and then I came back in seven. 74 and then back in 78 and you know stayed over a year each time and uh no no uh, you you go you come back you get a rest you see other people come in man and then boom you come back you're already over man and and it's just a good box office uh stuff and uh and years ago the the promoters would tell you gary says look hey don't buy a house in my territory unless it's got wheels on it you understand so uh, they didn't want you to stay you know and which is cool you know my my daughter my youngest daughter robin and uh man she, she she was in 13 different schools times she was in eighth grade so that shows you how much uh, we we moved so in this particular instance did did Vince senior come to you and say okay guys uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna to- we're gonna stop this for now maybe we'll come back with it later no 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 nothing like that brother you know how's it, uh, how's it work tell me behind it, the scenes it, it, hey you know Vince you know a businessman you know when you can in there brother man you know uh, I, I've I've already uh, seen him do uh, hey he'll give you a starting date and he'll give you a finish date the same day you know yeah. whatever i mean it, it's all up to him man he's got the master plan brother hey you you go with it man what you got to say you know you're you're, you're out there man every night working and and hey you're making your living for your family hey it's just business it's business uh, did you regret losing the titles because you guys were just so over at the time or, or or were you just ready to move on oh no it don't no it don't matter brother we went from there to uh, minneapolis awa you know Vern Gagne, a great payoff man and we stayed there for nine months or a year, you know, uh, wrestled against the uh, uh, the, the uh, Lumberjacks, which was Joe LaDuke and uh, Larry the Axe Henning. Uh, w- from there, man, we went to Atlanta. Stay, hold you on, know. hold on, Jimmy. I got your exact itinerary right here. Well, there you go, brother. See, it don't matter, man. We we just left the greatest territory in the world. The, then the, the Minneapolis was the second greatest, you know, and then from there, hey, we just kept cooking, man, you know. Okay, now I want to ask you, I want to ask you about Georgia because I've got you in 1976, Jimmy and Johnny left WWWF and joined the NWA where they score, uh, they toured the NWA territories. You debuted in, at Georgia Championship Wrestling in the summer of 76. Now at the time, was TBS reaching all over the country or were people really not aware of that? No, they had just had uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling at that time. Okay. It was before. W- what was it like going from New York City to Georgia and TBS isn't really national yet? Oh, it's great. It don't matter, brother. It don't matter to me, man. You know, hey, you know... Uh, uh, we just left New York, and, and we were there 15 months, probably had 12 covers on, on national magazines going all over the world, Gary. So, uh, you know, that that there is like the cable. Wherever we went, we were superstars, you know, because people see us on the uh, in the magazines, and uh, that's how some people, you know, uh, would be in the smaller territories, and God bless them, and maybe only a couple guys from their the territory, the top guys, would get some uh, featured uh, uh, articles. Well, well, hey, you know, if you're in New York, that's where all the magazines are, man, especially Madison Square Garden and, and, and so, so, uh, Valiant Brothers, uh, yeah, hey, we were, we were, uh, international stars because of the magazines, not because of the cable, is before the cable. Now, man, the, the cable and the magazines, I mean, these guys are just, uh, uh, really superstars, uh, international. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, back then, the magazines, you're right, the magazines were the cable. You bet, you and bet. If, and you guys had this knack of getting on the cover, which, if you were a wrestling fan back then would not be difficult to understand why you're the most colorful tag team in the history of wrestling so you're on the covers and coast to coast people buy the magazines and there's jimmy and johnny there you go coast to coast like butter toast brother <laughs> hey we were all over we were like coca-cola man all over brother now i was on youtube last night and you're still a youtube sensation because they've got 1977 interviews you and johnny did in san francisco you were working for roy shire after after you left Georgia, what what was it like working for Roy? I've heard a lot of different stories. Some people loved him, some people loved him so so. So how yeah, was I loved him, brother. Myself, you know, uh, I got along with everybody, Gary. Man, everywhere I went, myself, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, he was the boss, man. And uh, hey, he brought us in, you know, and he'd fly us home, you know. Uh, uh, Johnny to Pittsburgh, me to uh, you know Indiana, Northern Indiana, Chicago. In fact, I was uh, I was uh, uh, raised right there in Hammond, Indiana, far north as you can get right on Lake Michigan.
walking, man. Uh, uh, 30 minutes from you could be downtown Loop of Chicago. And, and, and uh, Roy Shires also was from Hammond, Indiana. And people don't know that, that the Funks, um, I'm talking about Dory Sr. and uh, his uncle uh, uh, Herman and his grandfather, uh, they were all policemen in Hammond, Indiana. So they're, they're out of Hammond, too. So some really big superstars' uh, um, roots are from Hammond, Indiana. You know, I got a, 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 my wrestling uh, a book, you know, it's called, uh, who mercy daddy, welcome to my world, the, uh, the Jimmy Valiant story, man. Hey, I, I, I tell all the stories. You know, Gary, you can ask me any question today, brother, and I cover it in my autobiography. Beautiful. Very good. Uh, when did you finish the book up, uh, Jimmy? Uh, it's been uh, out now for uh, four years. Uh, it's uh, 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 566 pages, Gary. It, uh, it uh, hardcover, of course, uh, beautiful, man. It, it, it weighs three pounds, man. It's the biggest wrestling book out there. I tell people, Gary, hey, hey, buy two copies, put one in each hand, man, and work out with them, you know. <laughs> uh, I started wrestling in 1964, man. I wrestled to 2004, over 40 years, and, and uh, I, I had over 10,000 pro matches, man. I drove 4 million miles on U.S. highways getting to them matches, so I tell people, man, hey, can you imagine there's a few stories in there where they are. Hey, anybody within the, in the business within the last 50 years, man, I talk about them, I got a story about them, and uh, it's all in my autobiography, Woo Mercy Daddy. Welcome to my world, the Jimmy Valiant story. Check it out, jimmyvaliant.com. Uh, pick you up a copy uh, that way through my website. You know, you can email me uh, off of that at, uh, at the boogie at usit.net. You can uh, uh, email me there or catch me on an autograph signing every weekend. Uh, this weekend, in fact, tonight I'm going to Kingsport National Guard Armory, and um, I'll be there uh, signing my book. Uh, and, and tomorrow night I'll be in uh, Burlington, uh, uh, North Carolina at the um, uh, CWF building. I'll be signing my book. Or you can come to my Wrestling Camp Hall of Fame Museum here, right in Shawsville, Virginia. Pick you up a copy in person. And uh, also, real fast, Gary, I want to I want to invite you and all your listeners to please any Sunday from 12 to 4, 52 Sundays a year, man. This is open to the public. There's no charge. You, you There's no ticket here, man. You come in, visit my camp, watch the kids train. We have matches and it's all free you have full access to all the buildings including the dressing rooms the main camp building the hall of fame building the the the, mu- the museum part and uh, we're only here four hours a week uh, 52 uh, weeks uh, uh, sundays a year from 12 noon to four o'clock please come be my guest with my lovely wife angel this is how i've uh, me we give back to the wrestling community and i already lived my life out man and uh, you know made my dream come come true. Now I'm helping these young kids make their dream come true. In fact, this Tuesday, last Tuesday, uh, WWE was in Roanoke, uh, uh, Virginia, right here. Roanoke from Shawsville is only 20 miles. And uh, I had a kid, that one of my instructors that had his tryout, and uh, he got on TV, man. They, they loved him. In fact, last night uh, he was on uh, uh, the uh, superstar, uh, WWE superstar station from the uh, 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 WGN Chicago Cable. And so they showed his match uh, uh, last night night and uh, we're just so proud of them man and uh, also they had me uh, they called and they had me there uh, come in early at 12 o'clock and I did a uh, 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 interview for the WWE Classic so so I don't know what they're doing with that but uh, brother they worked me over Gary man I, I sat down at 1 o'clock man and I walked out of that studio uh, at, 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 at uh, 5 o'clock 4 hours man so I did four like a 4 hour Broadway man well I can't wait to see it so yes, I sir. hope they don't leave it on the cutting room floor. There you go. Well, you Put know it all on, all four hours. Yes, sir, brother. Hey, they got it, man. It, it's all he- I history. hate edited. Ma- I hate edited material. Put the whole thing on. There you go. You know. You know. It, it's a documentary of of uh, the uh, the legends. They're saying. They're telling me. You know. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be in the WWE Hall of Fame, and 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 uh, they're they're getting. All, I think they just did Strongbow, and uh, they're getting all the. Well, well, last year's. Uh, uh, I know they did uh, uh, um, both of the Funks and Bill. Watts and and uh, uh, Steamboat, you know, and and uh, uh, Austin. So so they're they're getting all these on film, and they said, man, we may do something with this in in, in uh, the next uh, year, or we may do something in fifty years. They got it though; they got it hooked, and this is what they told me. So so I have no idea. Now, Jimmy, I'm going to ask you next about your second run in the WWF at the time they had changed the name, and something happened here, and I've never gotten a clear answer, and I really want you to give it to me, and that is that you guys came back in, but
but it wasn't the same as it had been the first time. I don't know what was different. Maybe it was because he had followed superstar Billy Graham and he had taken things to a different level. But you came in with Johnny and you got, did you get sick? Because then they had to bring in Jerry Valiant and you got, you can't, you got out of the ring and you yes. were like a manager at the time. And just tell me what happened, what happened at that point. I uh, sure will, Gary. And of uh, course, again, I cover all this in my autobiography, Woo Mercy Daddy, JimmyValiant.com, pick you up a copy. The what happened right there, Gary, was uh, that uh, me and Johnny, we, we went in, in, in uh, it was 78 or whatever year, so, yeah, sometime, and, and we did three tapes, uh, two days in a row uh, in Pennsylvania for, for the Federation, and then we left for three weeks, and while we were left, these tapes are showing, and then we came back the second time and did three more tapes, so it was me and Johnny, uh, you know, Handsome Jimmy and, and Luscious Johnny at Valley Brothers, so during the second day, um, I was feeling so bad, man, and I said, man, Johnny Boogie, I said, brother, I said, I, I think I got the walking pneumonia and the boogie woogie flu, you know, and, and uh, I couldn't even hardly hold my head up, so in between the taping and the interviews, I was just laying down, and from there I went to, um, uh, the next day I flew out and went to uh, Lexington, uh, Kentucky for uh, uh, the Jarrett's with uh, with uh, um, Lawler and them guys, so so I wrestled there, and, and I was going to Memphis that night, 400 miles uh, driving all night, man, and uh, the kid that was driving, we, we stopped in Nashville to uh, get some gas, and uh, man, he had the light on, and I, I man, I looked at him, he says, man, bo Boogie, I mean, he said, handsome, your eyes are yellow, brother, you all right? I said, yeah, man. So we drove all night, and time we got in Memphis, it was daylight, and I pulled the visor down, and I looked, and man, I, I looked like the freak, man. It, I mean, uh, there was no whites in my eyes, so I said, take me to the uh, hospital. They took me in, brother, and they took the blood test and came right back with uh, I had hepatitis uh, uh, A and B, and it was unheard of, brother. You, you know, how did you get both types at the same time? And they said, man, you, you, we're going to get you a room. You got to do this, this, and that. And I said, let me make a couple calls and uh, real fast, I didn't stay there. I, I, I did. I says, uh, I went to, to the airport, called uh, Vince, because he had six uh, weeks of tapes on the Valiant Brothers. So I called Vince, man. I called uh, Jared. Uh, I was supposed to be on top in Memphis Coliseum Monday night, and I went home to Chicago, uh, northern Indiana. I went home, brother, and uh, it took me um, uh, three or four months to uh, uh, come back and, and, and you know, get, get going again. And I almost died, brother. <clears throat> it was uh, really a serious deal. And uh, they brought uh, 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 Gentleman Jerry in, which was a stopper, uh, and, and uh, so, so he was the, the third Valiant brother. They put the straps on them and uh you know uh you know you gotta have the chemistry now i'm not saying nothing about nothing but but they didn't jive like me and johnny did uh you know the chemistry was a little they were uh, uh uh jerry was a wrestling heel man you know and 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 uh not ser more serious you know and johnny you know he was that way too and i was the crazy and wild one man and uh it just uh it was good it was a good run not not taking away from nothing but uh um, yeah, I came in and, and uh, I managed them. Then we did six mans, and we were the first to do six mans, you know, before the Free Birds, brother. And then we uh, did, uh, I had some single shots. I had uh, title shots with uh, Backlund. He was a world champion then. So uh, we finished the run that way. Was there, and that was really the end of the Valiant Brothers. And I just remember as a fan at the time, uh, uh, Jerry was Guy Mitchell. And not to take anything yes. away from him, because he was a good, he was a good heel. He came, from the, he came from the WWA territory. But I remember thinking, this just didn't have the same uh, even the three brothers it just didn't have the same chemistry maybe times were changing I don't know but you guys broke up the team at that point and it, it really never came back together so was it because you weren't that why did you guys break up the team yeah that was it man you know it was time uh, I, I had f uh, five uh, good productive years with Johnny you know and uh, man we both uh, you know I, I went on to Memphis man and and he went his way and brother uh, man I had a run with Jerry Lawler and in, uh, in Memphis, you know, uh, that uh, 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 that was 1977. I started going in there. I'm still going in there 30 years, 35 years later, you know, uh, you know, just doing stuff. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, that was it. Now, you break up the Valiant Brothers, and you've got to see what you're going to do with your career. And I remember for a very short period of time, you came into Mid-Atlantic with Lord Al Hayes as your manager, and you were King James Valiant. Do you remember that? Yeah, sure do, yes. Sir. Well, what was your thinking? at the time because you there was no boogie woogie man with king james valiant no no we 
came in and uh, they teamed me up with uh, uh, Greg Valentine and we was going against uh, Ebony Diamond, which was uh, Rocky Johnson, the Rock's daddy, and uh, 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 Bad Bad Leroy Brown. And, uh, man, we had a, a, a good little run there, uh, you know, just a, a few months. Uh, Valentine was leaving. He went to uh, New York. And uh, then, uh, uh, brother, they, they, they uh, sent me, uh, Jared sent me for, uh, to, uh, called the Crockett to uh, uh, get me for a shot in Memphis. So uh, they asked me, you want to go? I said, sure. So I went in for Memphis. And time I got back, Gary, uh, this was a Monday Memphis. Tuesday morning, we'd go in and do an uh, interview. So I went from the airport straight to the uh, office. Uh, and and uh, so as soon as I hit the door, man, they were waiting on me. Crockett pulled me in there and he says, man, uh, why, do you, why, why don't you tell us you, you know, you're a big, uh, uh, you know, baby face in Memphis, man, you know, in uh, character, you know, just, uh, you know, Memphis sold out. And, and uh, so Jerry Jarrett uh, uh, called them the next morning before I got there to try to get uh, a couple more dates. So I said, well, hey, you know, whatever you want, brother. And so that he said, that's what we want. He said, here, we want you to go to Memphis now for three weeks. And, uh, I, you know, uh, we already okayed it. Uh, Jarrett wants to go and use you three weeks. And time you get back, he says, uh, they'll forget about, because I wasn't there that long, so they'll forget about King James and you come back, uh, you know, and we got to think of a name. And I says, uh, how about the Boogie Woogie Man? You know, he says, great. He says, you got to change your appearance, you know. And, and um, Ole Anderson uh, uh, was there, the booker. And he says, uh, man, can, can, you grow, can you grow a beard? You know, I says, sure. And he says, throw the razor away. So so that was it. I started the beard. And, and um, I, I says, uh, let me come out to music. And uh, they said, what? I says, let me come out to music. I come out to music in Memphis, you know. So uh, I was the first to come out to music there brother and uh, uh i says uh, he said well get a song and and a uh, uh, boy from new york city was hot then manhattan transfer i came back in man and i did that song brother came out the first tv man dancing and, and clapping and, and and going up in the stands and kissing people man hugging nobody did this you know i was kissing people man the, the children men women grandma grandpa blue black green purple it didn't it didn't matter who i kissed everybody you know and uh, uh it, it was just a uh, boogie woogie man was on his way. Was there a reason they wanted to get rid of the uh, King James Valiant uh, persona? Well, there was no no reason. The reason was that when when I went to Memphis and and Jerry Jarrett called the next day, I'm on, I'm in the air, I'm coming back, and he says, "Can I can we get handsome again? You know, for the next three uh, uh, Mondays?" And and he said, "Well, what's going on?" Well, he said Memphis sold out last night with him. You know, oh, it was because he's you a, were, yeah, he's you a, were, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, a big character. You know, yeah, you were a face in Memphis doing great. They've got you as a heel in Mid Atlantic as right. King James. Right. So so that there they said, well, can let's do that here. You know, he says, go three weeks and come back and and you know and uh, uh, as the boogie woogie man, Jimmy Valiant, and and that was it, man. Now when you now you were doing, were you doing boogie woogie man in in Memphis the whole time or no? You... Had some Jimmy, but I was a crowd pleaser, but I didn't change. See, that's the whole thing. You know, I was uh, d- doing the dirty stuff. I mean, I could pull hair, man. I could uh, choke. I could do anything. And uh, people, uh, referees say, hey, did you do that? And I just point to the people in their life for me. You know, uh, so they, they loved me. And, and all they did was put me against the uh, the heels, the mean old rascals, you know. And, uh, and and But I didn't change my thing. But no, I was handsome Jimmy. Boogie Woogie was born at the Crockett Corporation. So so when you did Boogie Woogie, what, the fan reaction versus handsome Jimmy as a face, was it much, much stronger? Did the people just go for it instantly? Oh, yeah, it was over like a million dollars. Uh, I mean, the first TV, man. And, and uh, man, they put me with uh, uh, Ivan Koloff, the Russian bear. He was the TV uh, champion, NWA TV champion. And, man, we, we had a nine-month feud. I wrestled Ivan nine, uh, uh, seven days a week, brother, for nine months, man, chasing that belt, you know. And, uh, uh, hey, hey, that, that's that's where, how you draw money. Wh- which territory did you prefer, Mid-Atlantic, Memphis? Oh, brother. Because you're, you're, you're working them both simultaneously in a way. Yeah, they're, they're all good, man, to me. I mean, I enjoyed everywhere I went, you know. Uh, seriously, uh, uh, man, uh, coast to coast, man. Hey, wherever I was, man, that was my home. I worked hard and, and did my best, and uh, that was the deal. Now, you were in the very first Starcade 1983 as Charlie Brown. You remember this? Sure. And um, you beat the great Kabuki to win the Mid-Atlantic TV title. 
When you participated in the first Starcade, did you think, hmm, wrestling is about to change with these supercards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a first. Uh, Dusty Rhodes, man, I'll give him credit. He, he was uh, in the, the office, the booker, and he, he was the creator of Starcade and the uh, Crockett Cup and, uh, in 1984, the Boogeyman Jam, man. And uh, hey, he, he uh, did it all. And it was uh, the, the first big time deal, man. And uh, yeah, Charlie Brown came back. I got, I got uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, had to leave town for six months, and uh, I just put a hood on and stayed. And, uh, you know, people knew who I was. But uh, Baron Von Raska and, and uh, the great Kabuki with Gary Hart, God bless him, you know, they, they were, I was feuding with all of them, and uh, uh, that, that's how that all came about, man. Gary, I'm going to have to leave pretty soon, brother. I got another uh, deal going on right now, man. That's fine, Jimmy. We'll continue at, an, at another time. I really appreciate talking to you. Give that website out again. Yes, I will, brother. Thank you so much. And it's jimmyvaliant.com. Please check it out, people. And uh, please come and be my guest, mine and Angels, at uh, any Sunday at BWC Boogies uh, Wrestling Camp, Hall of Fame Museum. Everything's free once you get there, but it's only Sundays, 12 to 4. Jimmyvaliant.com or boogies at usit.net. So uh, love you, brother. And uh, hey, this 57talk.com is the greatest station in the nation, man. I'm telling you, man. I really enjoyed this, Gary. I love you, guy. Hey, please keep my number. Hey, please call me back anytime. I'd love to talk to you and your people. Don't worry. We will. We'll talk soon, Jimmy. God bless. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye-bye.